So Cryptic Studios have finally gone and done it. They added Mythic Colors to the Zen Store. Check your Events tab and you can see you can buy the Mythic Color Choice Pack. Thank God it's a choice and not some random garbage like your Golden Companions. But you can see it has every single color in the entire game right there. You're three of each type. Just keep in mind, you can only ever have one of each type. So one practical, one sturdy, one supportive, one unified and one wayfaring. Now its price is listed at just over 8,000 Zen with 30% off. That's the maximum discount you can possibly obtain from this. That is due to it being the Black Friday deal. So on 30% off everything. Not exactly everything though. Expedition packs will only be 25% off. Let's say you wanted this one with your flower bark shield illusion. Now we can check through the store and there's a lot of additional things there as well. And later on in the video, we're actually going to buy the mythic pack and I'm going to see exactly what it's like and how you can obtain the exact color you want and ultimately which ones you should be prioritizing to obtain depending on what role you are. First of all, a special thank you to all of these channel members for their continued support. And so what's up with this week? Well, we still have a Harvester of Nightmares. Make sure you're continually doing your daily quest for there. I missed the day yesterday, wasn't logged on at all. But again, just pick up that repeatable quest from this guy every day and go and do that. And you'll obtain your rewards. You'll obtain the tokens needed to spend from this guy with his store. I recommend getting companion tokens, legendary insignias, and then just save your achievement tokens for some other reward down the road. But if you really need coal motes, there you go. there's the option. Additionally, we also have Dungeon Delvers. The way it works is you essentially get much higher drop chances on like premium rewards in said dungeon chests, skirmishes and trials. And so what content should you be running? Well, according to the devs, your loot that you obtain should increase depending on the difficulty of the content you can run. So you want to look at like the average length of time that it would take you along with the item level. And supposedly the higher the item level and the longer the time, the more rewarding that content should be. There may be some content here or there that might be s slightly better for you than anybody else to run because of what gearness your character's at. How maxed out are you? If you're super maxed out and have the skills to run, let's say, the latest advanced dungeon, then that is probably the best content you should run in order to obtain and make the most of the Dungeon Delver's Delights rewards. And you can see here was the changes to like the premium loot and Dungeon Delver's. Essentially, all the loot got like drastically increased in the drop rates, we did get a reduction to the amount of times you can reroll and Dungeon Delver's Delights should increase by a further 50% the chance to obtain higher loot. So ultimately what you want to do is run the hardest content you can within a reasonable amount of time. Don't go running something that's going to have you struggling and wiping over and over. There's no point running Temple of Spider Master if you don't have a group that can comfortably complete it within at least 40 minutes. Additionally, we have times to currency for legacy campaigns, which is really good if you want to be trying to get those boons on these legacy campaigns. You can go and essentially trade in your genie gifts for the currency of specific legacy campaigns and it'll give you twice as much of the currency that you need for that campaign. So you'll be able to progress much faster. Unfortunately, there are some campaigns like Icewind Dale that you'll get stuck on the boons because you need like the reputation. So you'll have to do some questing. Storm King Xander, you'll need more Vonum Blood than you would get through genie gifts and so make the most of that by just doing those to get boons and ultimately you could farm descent into avernus and do the whole juma bag thing but i think at this point it's a bit overrated and it doesn't really drop you anything great and so back to the zen market we can see that additionally you can buy these greater shards i think it's a bit of a joke you're spending over six thousand zen for just 50 greater shards when you need, as you can see, to get a collar to Mythic, freaking 100 greater shards. Are you kidding, Cryptic? You can just go and buy a Mythic collar for 8,000. However, look at the small print. Can only be purchased 
once per account. Yeah. Am I going to do it? I will. To be honest, it's quite a decent offer compared to the amount that those colors actually cost to get upgraded. Again, it's only one per account. Yes, it will probably drive down the price of your mythic colors, but if only one person can obtain one of them, you can see now it's gone, then, well, you have to decide whether you want to sell it or not. And in fact, the choice pack is bound to your account when you obtain it. You can see just there, bound to account. Be warned. Looking at the colors, you can see they also bind on pickup account. Yeah, big warning. You will not be selling these. Definitely something to note and keep in mind before you spend that Zen. These are going to be bound. You will not be able to sell them down the road if you ever want to like swap them out for something else. Now, ultimately, what colors should you have and prioritize as, let's say, a damage dealer? Well, most classes will want the encounter power damage one. It will help massively with an AOE damage and additionally for single target, most classes will generally have more damage from encounter powers than at wills. That would be then your sturdy collar, take the encounter power damage one. And I would prioritize this because it's multiplicative damage. It doesn't stack with your other damage buffs. It multiplies everything separately, which means it's a true 5% damage increase. Then secondly, I would prioritize your wayfaring collar and I would take the critical severity for again damage dealers that is five percent however if you're capped out on crit severity well you should just reshuffle your stats so that you gain more accuracy and it's highly unlikely you're capped out on everything and if you're running an augment switch to a striker and you won't be capped out on everything otherwise there is recharge speed and action point gain and some builds they can fit if you're trying to squeeze your daily power off every 30 seconds and get that reliably you might need action point gain but overall Crit severity, hands down, is the best wayfaring collar. Again, for damage dealers. As for the rest of the collars, for unified, you probably just want to go with movement speed, but you could take incoming healing as a damage dealer. And as supportive, there's not really any great ones here, but you could take stamina regen again. It'll help you dodge a little bit more often. And practical, it doesn't matter at all. But again, I would advise take the rough astral diamonds. Let me go to healers. And you will again want to focus primarily on the supportive one that gives you the outgoing healing. That is going to be your biggest benefit. And then again, your critical severity. Alternatively, if you're capped out on all your healing stats, you could go with recharge speed. It will help with regenerating your divinity back if you're using said powers to regenerate divinity like on a paladin. And then again, it doesn't really matter what you choose for unified. Again, you could go incoming healing or movement speed. And then for your sturdy healer, again, it doesn't matter at all. Damage is not going to affect your healing and practical again doesn't matter, but I would go with the rough astral diamonds. Then for a tank, I would again go with your stamina gain as your supportive one. Not such a big deal, but it'll be the same benefit you near enough get from recharge speed of 5%. And otherwise, you definitely want to pick up the incoming healing one to help the healer heal you better. And then for sturdy, you generally want to go with encounter power damage. You generally will do a bit more damage than your at wills there. And then practical again, you just go with like rough astral diamonds. Ultimately, what I'm going to take is probably the crit severity collar because then I can work with that on my healer and I can also have it on my DPS and it'll make my stats look better. But I technically should take the encounter power damage one just because that will increase my damage bit better, but it's not going to work if I'm switching to, let's say, a healer. And so I would rather take one collar that's going to benefit both roles than just one. In the Zen market, you may also notice that you can purchase the Mythic Premium Mount Bundle. It will give you a bunch of shards, some upgrade tokens for those ma legendary mounts that you obtain from this choice pack where you can obtain two of them and then just the mythic mount choice pack. I think it's all overrated. The only real good mythic mount here would be the king of spines. The rest are just not good. And then the legendary mounts, I would take the swarm and the giant toad and the rest I wouldn't say are too great. 
The Golden Lion is okay for survivability if you need that extra oral armament combat power, but again, not too great, and you generally want to increase everybody's damage with like Swarm instead. And additionally, you have a companion and companion upgrade token bundle. Herein, you can obtain an account wide companion, and you can see the following you have your cunning mimic. I think it's just garbage. You have your tutor. Yes, it's very good for increasing everybody's combat advantage. You can see when you have it summoned, it gives class and session 5% combat advantage for everybody. Excellent buff ability for DPS. Then your Hellmite Paladin Ghost. It's pretty decent for single target healing when you're fighting a boss. It essentially puts like a seal on the boss and then when everybody attacks it, they heal themselves. Then the Dedicated Squire, a very good like AOE healing companion that no matter what content you're running, he'll be able to heal pretty decently with his smite ability, healing nearby allies. They just got to be kind of grouped up a bit. Account wide Minsk, excellent for the defense power, the bigger they are for DPS. And then your Spine Devil, one of the another best summoned companions for the damage buff to everybody basically causing the enemy to be vulnerable where is that here with the impaling fork they take 10 percent extra damage from everybody not as reliable but when it procs it's really good and yeah otherwise you have the neverwinter knight again offense power really good with its 7.5 percent buff just there and then you have your mercenary, which I don't think is good at all. Don't see why it is there. Ultimately, I'll probably test out all of these and make sure they haven't changed anything. But with that said, that's a really nice selection of companions right there. Additionally, you get a companion upgrade token pack, which will give you 75 and you get two of those so 150 enough to get it to legendary. And you'll need a bit more tokens still to get it to mythic. Ultimately, like a super good pack with like insane good companions right there, excluding your cunning mimic and excluding your mercenary. Again, all of them being account wide. Additionally, you can get this mythic insignia choice pack where you can choose literally any insignia you want. That's pretty cheap again at only 1,400 to be honest. Yes, you can get different insignias from the auction house for maybe slightly cheaper, but yeah, a choice pack containing your choice of a mythic insignia, pretty viable right there. Again, 30% off down to just 1,400. And I believe that is it. Just keep in mind, again, you can only buy one of these mythic insignia packs. Oh, and uh, you will be able to buy one coal moat at, I believe, a significant discount. It's a single purchase and binds on pickup. Yeah, just make sure you read the fine print on those sales. A lot of them are like single purchase and bound when you obtain it. So that about sums up all the news and updates. Again, make good use of the dungeon delvers, run some dungeons, try and run the stuff that's like borderline, the hardest content you can run in a reasonable amount of time just at your skill level. I can't just recommend one thing like Master of the Hunt for everybody because that can just get boring and ultimately I don't think it's actually worth it. I have farmed my ass off in Master of the Hunt. Yes, if you can continually beat it in like two, three minutes, it can be worth it. But same could be said for something that could take longer with a higher chance at better rewards. Again, a massive thank you to all of these channel members for their added support. We'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.